You know, what a wonderful time of worship it was. You know, I just can't help but think, you know, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. What a beautiful time being in his presence. In spite of us, God comes and he visits his people. And I couldn't help but be reminded of some of the prophetic words over this place and over this house while that was all going on. And one of them, the Lord reminded me, it's a hospital, that this place would be a hospital. And you know, a hospital is what? A place of healing, restoration, recovery, and get on with it out there and do what you need to do. And so that's part of it. And God's at work. But before I pray this, uh, before I share this message this morning, I, I do want to pray. And I'll also pray later on, we'll pray for Israel and what's going on. We'll do that a little bit later because I have it within my message this morning. But this message this morning, it's consistent with the theme for our year. I sound really loud right now. Um, that's okay. And the theme is a time to build. A time to build. And this morning's message is a time to repair. And I believe this message isn't just for us. I believe this message is a global message. What a big statement. I believe this message is a global message. But see, at the moment, God is at work for a global church, not just us. We're just one part, one little dot, one little piece of the puzzle of God's master plan. And so I just want to pray right now. So, Father, right now I pray that you would make this message come alive, that you would right now give me the anointing and the unction to preach it. That, Lord, I would decrease and that you would increase. That you would remove me from this message. And Holy Spirit, that it be just the message this morning. And I pray, Father God, for ears to hear what you are saying. I pray, Father God, for the conviction that's needed. The repentance that's needed. The awakening that's needed. The revival that's needed. I pray, Holy Spirit, we need you more than ever. And right now, I pray that you'd breathe afresh, that your word would go forth and accomplish what you wanted to do, cut off every lie, bind anything that's not of you, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. If you could turn with me to 1 Kings 18 and verse 30. And I hope many of you are there now. So while that's there, a few weeks ago, I said prophetically we are in the days of Elijah. I've said this before. Elijah is often a representation of the forerunner before Christ. This time it will be before his return as Lord. But many things must take place, and we are to make ready for many things through hard and good times. And that God is at work, and he's turning the hearts back again to himself. That is always the spirit of Elijah, to restore and to turn the hearts back again to God. That is always the prophetic utterance, that is always the mandate before the coming of Jesus. That is the spirit of Elijah. And the Holy Spirit is on that at present, at the moment. And there's things going on all over the world. There's a shifting. There's a shaking. There's so much going on. And God is restoring. And God is resetting things. And God is at work. And those who have ears to hear need to listen 
to what the Spirit is saying at the moment. A time to repair. What are we repairing? We are repairing the former things of God. Going back to the original, a reset. You've heard that word so many times now. How many of us have heard that word reset? Well, can I tell you something? It's also a reset to the church. A reset of God's original design. God's original design. And now I'm going to read the, this part. I said prophetically we were in this season a few weeks ago. Then Elijah said to all the people, come near to me. So all the people came near to him. And he did what? He repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. I believe the altar of the Lord has been broken down. I believe not only us, but many. There's been some idolatry. We've built unto ourselves. We haven't built unto God and done things unto God. We've done things unto man or for ourselves in so many areas. And we need a repairing of the altar once again, which always represents not only the place of sacrifice, but where and who does the sacrifice belong to? The Lord. No other idols before him. And so we're in a great time of repair all over the church, and it needs to be repaired. And we know that the gates of hell won't prevail because it's founded on the rock on him. But there is a repairing time and a repairing process going on right now all over the earth. And Elijah took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob to whom the word of the Lord had come saying, Israel shall be your name. Then with the stones, (coughs) he built an altar in the name of the Lord. I'm just going to leave it right there. In this story, Elijah is representing the word of the Lord. And we could also say the Holy Spirit. And while I'm on the Holy Spirit, I heard someone say this in a prophetic utterance. We're in this era is about sound, breath, and voice. The year of the Holy Spirit. We need to hear the sound of heaven at the moment. More than ever before. There's so many voices. We need the Ruach. The very breath of God. To breathe afresh upon each and every one of us. And we are kidding ourselves if we don't need it. If we think we've got it all together. We need the Ruach. The breath of God. You know there was the breath of God that changed the name of Abraham. Then he went to Abraham. The Ruach, it was the very breath of God, the very breath of God that was breathed into Adam's nostrils that caused him to be a life-giving, a man with breathing life, a spirit. The breath of God, we need it once again. And a voice. Because the enemy has tried to muzzle us. He's tried to silence us. A voice needs to rise up once again. The church of God needs to rise up once again to be the voice and the word of the Lord in this hour and season to carry the message of the Lord during this time. We need to arise, church, no longer to be muzzled. And we can't do it without the Holy Spirit. To be wise is to know Our dependency is on him. The Holy Spirit who descended upon the 120 on the day of Pentecost, which we'll celebrate next week, and everything started to take place from that moment on. There was a shift. We need the Holy Spirit once again. Because it's not by might, not by power, but by what? My Spirit, says the Lord. We need the demonstration of the power of of God once again, not just words, not just thoughts, not just strategies, not just ideas of man or God's, uh, man's agenda. We need God's agenda. That's what we need at the moment. A time to repair the former 
things of God. That's why Elijah took the stones. It was symbolic to be like what? The memorial stones of old. Remember, think back. You have been faithful, just like we've sung this morning. You're always faithful. You're a faithful God. And those stones were memorial stones of the number of the tribes of Israel. And he built the altar of that. We need to rebuild the altar with the things of God, all that God is, all that God's done, all that he says he is, all that he says you are. And we start to rebuild stone by stone. Because you and I are what? Living stones being built up a spiritual house unto the Lord Jesus Christ. And he is what? The chief cornerstone the only foundation there is no other foundation but jesus christ that's it that's what we build on so we have god versus the enemy good versus evil truth versus false on one side is ahab and jezebel who are only out for themselves with an evil agenda Versus Elijah and God with a kingdom agenda. And at the moment, we need to discern what is God's agenda, man's agenda, or an evil agenda. Discern. And it's pretty simple to discern what, which is which and what is what. And I'll get to that in a little while. But Elijah evokes the name of God. Why does he do that? Why does Elijah need to evoke the name of God once again? And I think at the moment, you and I need to evoke the name of God once again. Because the very name he evoked was the great I am. When God appeared to Moses, and he starts to invoke that name, You are God, the great I am. There is no other. There's no one like you. There is only one true God. There is no other. We put our trust in you. The I am, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Israel, he declares. And of Israel, where he was at, what he was facing in his current situation, this battle between the spirit of Jezebel as well, if you like. A controlling spirit. The spirit of Jezebel that's out to kill and to steal and destroy the things of God. All they were concerned was about themselves. Not about others. Not about the people. They killed people to build their own wealth. And sometimes I think at the moment of what's going on, I think also there's a great reset with the prophetic. There truly is. I'm seeing it all over the place. A great reset with the prophetic. Once again, because God will not be mocked. That's why things have to go back to the original state. We've missed it somewhere, many of us. And too many people have built unto themselves and made it more about them and their foundation and now it's starting to rock. No other foundation but Jesus can we build on. And he gets all the glory. Father, we thank you for what you're doing. We embrace what you're doing, Lord. And we pray, Father God, you would deal Whatever needs dealing with, Lord, we present ourselves to you this morning. Even us, Lord. Even us this morning. And so Elijah says a declaration and he says, How long will you falter between two opinions? As I think of that, you know, every time I hear that word opinion, I think everyone's got an opinion. But there's only one opinion that counts, and that's God's. That's the opinion I'm interested in. And the other question is, do you know who the true God is? And who are you going to serve? 
Who are you going to serve? Who are you going to serve? Are we serving God in repairing and building the kingdom? Or are we pulling down? It's simple. Are we building up? Or are we pulling down? And I spoke this quite a few weeks ago. That's how we discern. What are we doing? What are we saying? The evidence will always be the fruit. That's the byproduct. Whether that's our life in what we're sowing and saying and doing and the effects that will be seen to all those who are in close proximity to us or beyond. That's the truth. It's evident. Who are you hanging around with? Are they coming alive? Are they at a better place? Are they fired up? Are they pressing in? Are you part of the positive? Or are you the negative? That's the reality. So what are we repairing? And what does the altar of the Lord represent to us today? That place of sacrifice. And if we think of sacrifice, it's love. Bottom line is love. Everything has to be screened through love. I could quote 1 Corinthians now 13 and read it out. And if you measure everything that you're doing, everything that you're saying right now this morning, this is the church globally. And if it's not measured through 1 Corinthians 13, then you're a sounding gong. Blah, 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 blah. That's what you're doing. That's the truth. I mean it. This message, let me tell you, I've been in prayer, I've been fasting, and I know God is on it. And it's not just for us. It's beyond us. Because God is beyond us. Love is an action word that looks like something. And everything belongs to the Lord. And everything we do should be unto the Lord. And I said before, no other idols. There must be a removal of idols in our lives. What are the idols in our life? Even self. Is it pride? Is it ego? Is it wanting to be right? What is it? And for you and I, It'll be different because everyone has an Achilles heel. Everyone has that weakness or that weak point. And we need to surrender it to God so the enemy doesn't grab hold of it and run with it. And he will. We're not beyond it, trust me. None of us are. We need to rely on God to keep us. I believe in God's keeping power, not my own keeping power. My trust is in him and him alone. Our trust should be in him and him alone. Enjoy this message this morning, church. It's a good message. But also of praise. He's restoring praise once again. You know, I love, you know, I had that scripture as well, Hebrews uh, 13 or 15. 13, 15, yeah. And you know that word when it says, this, uh, I'll offer, it's the fruit of our lips. So we know we don't sacrifice animals anymore. Jesus was that perfect sacrifice. You and I know that. But see, that scripture is profound. Because see, what it's declaring is the shift that took place. No longer do we sacrifice animals. Jesus is the Lamb of God. But now we sacrifice, it's with our lips. See, that word sacrifice is actually to slaughter. It means to slaughter. You've got to slaughter some things with your mouth. And start to praise him. Start to declare his praises. Start to declare who he is. Start to declare all that he is. And all that his promises that are yes and amen. It's the fruit of our lips. And we know the tongue, what it does. This little tongue can do so much damage or so much good. James talks about that, doesn't he? It's like that little rudder. Hmm, interesting. 
And he's restoring prophecy and prayer and worship and honor. And as I think of this, you know, I really, I've shared this with a few people. I think honor is a bit of a missing link these days. It's so easy for people just to blast off, and I'll get to it in a second. But King David would not raise his hand to the Lord's anointed because he understood something of honor. He understood something of honor. When Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses, God comes down. He actually got angry. And he goes, weren't you afraid to speak against Moses? And when he departs, Miriam becomes a leper. And even though Moses prays to remove it, he says to him, hey, look. And he says a particular thing, which is okay, I can repeat. But basically he says, listen, she's done it. She's got to wear it now for at least seven days. That's it. That's the process. And I was talking to Andrew. And Andrew was telling me of a well-known prophet at the moment who's just getting pulled down. They're just ripping into him. And he's going through a very hard time, a difficult time. And it just saddens me. Have you noticed sometimes, you know, unfortunately... You know, there's, for Facebook can be good and it can be bad. And people just want a barrage of all comments. They're just barraging him rather than praying for him. And I often think those who judge are in judgment. Those who think others are in delusion are delusional. Those that want to remove the speck out of their brother's eye have the plank what? In their own eye. Come on, that's scripture. Oh, God's a God of love. Absolutely. But there's things that he doesn't like. Actually, there's some things that he hates. Proverbs 6.16. You can look at that later. We can also say that repairing stage is also a time of repentance. A time of restoration. And whenever you have repentance and restoration, it means reform. A reformation, a reshaping once again, or a resetting. Why? So God can come and bring about who he is and his will. Because all of a sudden this represents him. All of a sudden the church starts to look like his body. And he's the head. And we're doing what he says. Being his hands and his feet. His eyes, his mouth, all those elements. Extended to a lost humanity. Can I get the worship team up here before I start to wind up or down, whichever way? And all of a sudden, the church starts to look like his body. And I believe God is dealing with hearts. It's a heart condition. Because he's what? Restoring the hearts back to God. That's what needs to take place. That's the season we're in if we're willing to accept it. I believe God is on this move. I believe God is on the move of building and repairing to make ready for the harvest. And if we're on God's move, God's agenda, we will see the promise, the great outpouring, awakening, revival, (coughs) whatever you want to term it. And you know what's even funny? People want to argue what we need. It's hilarious. It, it, it's so mind-blowing, and sometimes this is what the church is like, and people are like, and friendly fire is like. People want to say, well, do we really need revival? Yes. Is there a dead people out there? 100%. If you're not born again, you're dead. We need revival. 
Do we need an awakening? Yes. Are there many sleepy people and sleepy Christians? Yes. They need to be awakened. Do we need an outpouring of the Holy Spirit to do it? Yes. Because we can't do it ourselves. It is impossible with man, but possible with God. We need it all, but people want to argue, which one do we need? I'm thinking, you know what? Forget which one. How about we pray for all of them? Would that work for you? Amen. Let's agree. Can we all stand this morning? You know, many of us have been praying and fasting for a harvest. And particularly for Israel. And isn't it amazing that during this time of praying for Israel, this global prayer, praying for Israel, for their return unto the Lord. Because that's always the message. Blessings come from them all the way down and from here all the way back up. From there to the ends of the earth and from the ends of the earth back to them. And look what's going on at the moment in Israel. Is it coincidence? I don't think so. God is at work. And right now, Father, we pray for your land, Israel. We pray for the people of Israel. And we pray for all those there concerned. That you would come, Holy Spirit, in your sovereignty and in your power, Bring the conviction. I pray that the Jewish people may know that Jesus Christ is their Messiah. That Jesus Christ is their Lord. And Father God, and to all those who are opposing, may there be conviction and repentance as well of their wrongdoing. And may they come into the light of the truth of the gospel that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God who died and who rose again and who sits at the right hand of the Father. We pray, Father, send forth your word. Send forth your power. I pray, Father God, that you would intervene with your divine intervention and bring your resolution and your outcome and what you want out of that whole situation. In Jesus' name. The other thing that I think of when, we, when I fast, anyway, particularly, I think of Isaiah 58. And many of us know Isaiah 58. And sometimes we fast, and that's a good thing. It's always a good thing to fast. Anything that gets you in a place where, and some people go, oh, do you need to fast? I think, well, if it's good enough for Jesus and Paul, it's good enough for me. So anything that will place you in a position of humbling and seeking God, hearing God more is always a good thing. But if you're going to fast, I love what Isaiah, what Isaiah 58 says. That you bring to your house the poor who are cast out. When you see the naked, that you cover him and not hide yourself from your own flesh. If you take away the yoke from your midst, the pointing of the finger and speaking wickedness. And that you honor the day of the Lord. That we honor Him. Father, I pray, Lord Jesus, that right now, that we'd be honest with ourselves. To make steps to draw near to you this morning. And to hear what you're saying to speak to our heart condition right now, Lord. To speak the truth to where we're at and let the spirit of truth in. And right now I ask that we would not resist you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, would you come and do a work that we can't do? 
Holy Spirit, come right now and bring the repair, bring the restoration, so we may be called repairers of the breach, the repairers of the former things, that we are people who are building the kingdom of God, who are building and raising up the things of God, that it's a time to repair, and we're repairing the altar of the Lord, the image of God, the face of God, as it were, the honor of God, as it were, that we are building up as living stones, acceptable and pleasing unto you, Lord, a spiritual house this morning. And I pray, Lord Jesus, whatever it takes that you would do this morning within us, because you love us too much to leave us where we're at. You love us too much, Lord. And I pray right now we would humble ourselves because the Scripture says this, if we humble ourselves and we draw near and we resist the devil, that the devil will flee, but we need to humble ourselves right now, Lord. Deal with pride, deal with ego, Deal with whatever you need to deal with, Lord, whether it's in me or in us and the global church, Lord, so we may arise in this great reset and be seen to be the hope of the world and draw people to yourself and to wherever you want them to be and go. And let us be the salt and light and the ministers that you've called us to be, the ambassadors of God on this earth who represents you to see heaven invade earth so we would declare your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven and everybody said amen thank you church God bless you
we just, you're so beautiful, Jesus. You're so beautiful. Lord, would you come in and would you do the work on us today? Would you do the heart surgery, God? Lord, would you clear out anything that needs to be cleared out, God? Lord, would you just come and make us ready, Lord God, for revival? Repair what needs repairing, Jesus. It starts at the altar first. It starts in the temple first. So, Lord, would you repair what needs repairing in the name of Jesus, Lord God? Maybe your willing vessels, your yielded vessels, Lord God, not afraid of a little heart surgery, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We give you honor. We give you glory. We give you praise. Continue to wake up your church, God. Continue to wake her up, Lord. Arise the sleeping bride, Jesus. Arise the sleeping bride. Amen. Well, God bless you, church. I pray that you have a great week. Pray that God would minister to you all week as you go. And see you. Oh, just one more thing. Um... We, oh, congratulations to Daniel and Sarah. Where are you? are you? Where are you, Sarah? Daniel. Congratulations, Daniel and Sarah, on the birth of their baby boy, Jacob. Yay, come on. Another grandson. Woo! Come on, keep them coming. God bless your church. Thanks.